So I've got monthly net income, 2,903.41, correct? Uh, correct. All right, and then what is the leftover cash flow per month, net? Okay, uh, 21.49.27. 2,000? Yes, cash flow, right? I'm asking you, I wanna make sure. Yes, you were asking for the cash flow. Yeah, so, so it's... So that, that's 21... 50? 49, 27. 21, 49, 27. So out of so out of income of two thousand nine hundred three forty one, you mean to tell me that you're only spending what a couple hundred dollars a month? Uh, yes, um, because I after I did my um, roof before we talked last, I was trying to get uh, everything in order so that um, I didn't have any other expenses. And I accomplished that. Okay, just making sure, because you know it's it's yeah. this is unlikely, you know, from what I'm used to seeing from people. Usually, living expenses is much more, but so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with what you're saying. So seven hundred fifty-four dollars and fourteen cents is what you pay per month on bills, debt payments, housing, everything. Food. I don't, I, well, I, I'm, I'm debt free. Debt free. It's the situation. Perfect. Okay. Debt free. That's fine. So, yeah, I'm debt free. I just created a debt just before I sent you my numbers. And that's on remodeling um, my house. <clears throat> so, as of when I sent this, I was totally debt free. I just acquired a debt. Where is the debt? I don't see it on the spreadsheet. Tell me what the debt is. Um, hold on, hold on, just a second. Let me. It will be on the. But it's what extent? Is that the? Okay, the personal debt under credit card two. Did I send you the wrong sheet? Uh, just tell me what it is. I sent I sent the sheet. Um, I sent you one April. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I just sent one what on the twentieth November. Yep. And the, I attached it to the email. So what I'm looking at is the one I updated. I penciled in the number, and I believe what you're looking at is what uh, the first one I sent. If there's no, nothing. Okay, so what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So, what's the debt? It's eight thousand seven hundred seventy-five fifty-two cents. And what is that? A credit card or? Yes, it's oh, a okay. consumer credit card. The Home Depot. Yes, that is it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Is it at like a zero percent offer or anything like that, or or no? No. Okay. No, I had I've had this card for a long time, but they did just increase my credit limit okay. to nineteen five. So it's twenty two point nine nine percent interest rate. Mm -hmm. What's the monthly Correct. What's the monthly payment on that? I got one hundred eleven dollars. Cool. All right, and then you have a personal line of credit for twenty thousand. That is correct. At eleven point eight three percent. Correct. All right. So really simply, uh, uh, how long has this been owed the credit card? Eight thousand. Uh, I just I just paid it. Uh, what? Uh, uh, no, this is November. November. So like a month? Less than a month? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> so you haven't even made the payment yet on the credit card. I'm about to. Okay. Because the payment's due on the 20th today, on the 22nd. Okay. Today. So we're going to go ahead and pull from the line of credit because that's at 11.83% and 
and this credit card is at 22.99%. So the due dates today, let's go ahead and pull 8,775.52 right out of the line of credit and, okay. and go ahead and pay off the credit card in full. There really is no cash flow gain because you didn't even make the payment yet. So no. in terms of uh, your expenses are, are going to stay the same because you didn't even, we didn't even factor in that as an expense yet, according to the spreadsheet that you put here. We didn't even, uh -huh. unless you did, if you did, then, then my expenses go from 754, 14 minus 111. Is that how it went down or no? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was looking at, I think, I think you have the wrong sheet. That's okay, you're gonna help me, that's why. Because okay. you got the right okay. one in front of you. So, I have expenses at 754.14, what do you have? Hold on. Total expenses per month. Let's see here. My living expenses, I just rounded it up to 700. Oh, okay. So if you rounded it up, then that makes sense. Then you probably already included the 111 as your, yeah. as a, you probably already included that into your expenses. Yeah. Great. So today we're going to make a chunk. We're going to transfer or, or, you know, move 8,775.52 from the line of credit to the checking account, checking account pays the credit card mm -hmm. in full today. You're done with that. You avoided 22.99 interest, and now you're gonna do velocity banking on the line of credit, right? So we're going to dump. Income's gonna go in. 2903.41, expenses coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna you know, take your word and say 700 is your expenses. So, mm -hmm. 2903.41, so I'm going to put you at 2203.41. Got very good cash flow, so this should be wiped out in like less than <laughs> four months, or probably less than that. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. I was, yes. 2203.41. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This will look good. Oh, I made a mistake. That's not expenses. Got you at, got you at 2,203,41 expenses. That's a big mistake. So it's 8,775.52 minus. Now, um, the income of 2,903,41, how does that come in for you on a, on a monthly, weekly, biweekly? Monthly. Monthly. On what day? Yes. Yeah. On the first of each month. Okay. Cool. How much cash do you have on hand right now in your checking account? My checking. Okay, hold on. Cash. Okay, I've got um one thousand eight hundred twenty-two dollars seventy cents in my checking. Um, I've got two checking accounts. In the second one, I've got five thousand forty-nine dollars and nine cents. You have five k and one, and then the first one you had what else? Eighteen hundred twenty-two dollars. Okay. Seventy cents. Cool. Checking account number one. Checking account number two. We got about sixty-eight hundred in cash on hand. I've got a third one. Um, $1,794.13. $1,794.94. $13. $13. Look at you. Okay. Let's see. All right. I like this. And today's your birthday, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And I'm going to make sure everyone else in the you know, and the chat says happy birthday to you as well. Um, it's, it's awesome that, you know, could be doing so many other things on your birthday, 
but you're, you know, you're here with us, you're working on your numbers, and, you know, you know what's important. Um, yeah. So a couple of options here. Okay. Um, to be quick, we could just send all this cash into the uh, line of credit and avoid really any interest being accrued on it and pretty much have it paid off in about a month or two. It's one option. Okay. Right, so we'll just write that down. That's one option. Have all the money drive into the line of credit. Let it sit there, you know, pay your bills. It'll be done and you'll still, you know, you'll be cash flowing the next couple months. The okay. second option is you leave the money alone. We do velocity banking for about three to four months or less and have this thing zeroed out by okay. February 2020. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And then the, the next step, right after paying off the, the line of credit, after, you know, zeroing out the, the credit card, avoid, avoiding high interest costs on that, I know you emailed me about starting the, the life insurance policy. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. So we know that it takes about, about a month to go through underwriting, medical exam. I show you an illustration, ask questions, we learn, we get educated. About a month or less to you know, figure out what we want to fund, how long, all that stuff, right? So you figure, okay. you figure by the end of December or January is about the time that we could get a policy put in place. Right now, okay. if we run some numbers and see, okay, what would be an idea of, of what I want to put into this policy? And let me ask you a question. Do you have any like 401k or any type of assets? Yes, I have a well, TSP account. Okay. What's the value of that? Right now, it's at 23000 um, get the actual here. That's okay. We we know twenty three k about you know give or take. And are you mm -hmm. are you uh, are you putting any money into that? No, no, I'm retired now. Okay, okay. So so, so you're that, collecting. That ended up on, mm -hmm. You're actually collecting it's from just, that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you um, let's see. So when I take that income. 290341 times that by 12, I have you at 34,84092 in terms of income. Um, and okay. the place that you're living in right now, you own that? Yeah, debt free. And what's the value of that property? It's 90,000. Okay. 90k. Reason why I'm asking these questions when it comes to life insurance in terms of uh, the amount of money that we want to throw into a policy, okay. the insurance company is going to take our age plus health plus income that you make in a year and when they when they look at the age they're trying to to determine the the mortality date or the mortality like rates that they have on here. I think I spelled that right, mortality rate. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, how, how long, you know, do we have in terms of this person funding the policy? And then how much um, death benefit are they willing to insure us for based on our age, health, and income. So when they're looking at the age, they're looking at the mortality rate, but they're also going to take the income that you make in a year and they're gonna like multiply it. They're gonna multiply that total income in a year by a certain number depending on your age. So they might, okay. they might times this number by five. So it might only be 5x or maybe as high as 10. 
So, and then whatever that is, that's how much death benefit they are willing to insure you for. The only reason why they would allow the number to be higher because we don't exactly have a whole lot of money coming in in terms of income. But if we're able to show assets or, you know, cash, then that could help increase that death benefit a little bit higher. And the reason why we, we need a, a decent sized death benefit is so that we could have a decent size MEC limit, right? The MEC limit being uh, the modified endowment contract, which allows you the ability to overfund your policy based on your premium that you have on the policy itself, right? So if you're... Okay. So if your premium is 2000 a year, we're hoping that we could have the ability to put in 20000 into that policy, especially if my cash flow is 2,149 to per month times that by 12. That's 25,791, right? 25,791, 24 in yearly cash flow. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, let's see, 34,840.92 times five is 174,204.60. And then if they're able to times it by 10, I don't think they'll go any higher than 10. 34,840.92 times 10, 348,409 dollars so I might have a death benefit somewhere around here. Based on that, we'll be able to see what our MEC will be, which will give us our premium, and that'll help us see, okay, how much money can we actually get into this thing? Um, but one thing I would say I think is super important is figuring out other ways to create wealth as well, right? So, so you just turned how old? 64. 64, okay, so at 64, yeah, I believe when it comes to the insurance companies at that age, I think their multiplier is somewhere between 5x and 10x based on your, okay. uh, based on your income. So I think the death benefit would be around here. And this is general with majority of insurance companies in terms of how much are they willing to uh, insure you for. Um, mm -hmm. When I see <clears throat> what I, what I want to like really plan out here is in the next six years or less, like what can I do to create passive income, right? Um, your expenses are super low, so that's a huge advantage there. Um, and we're getting ourselves educated, which is also smart because we don't want to get, you know, uh, duped by anyone, so to speak, in terms of mm -hmm. putting your money into something and then it not performing the way we want it to perform. And there's all kinds of, you know, things that can happen. But what I'm, what I'm thinking is in addition to having this IBC policy where once we figure out just how much can I get approved for once we go through underwriting medical and they'll let us know. So let's say, for example, you can only put in a max of 15000 into a policy. Well, that still leaves us with another 10 plus thousand in cash flow. Where is that money going to go? Right. 
Um, okay. So what I'm what I'm thinking about is leveraging the property that you have. It's it's okay. it's it's what we call debt equity, right? It's just it's equity that's sitting, not doing nothing. So it's it's money that's sitting, not doing nothing. We could use this to our advantage to get a HELOC against it to acquire another piece of land property that could create some passive income for ourselves and then using the velocity banking method to store all income cash flow the the rental that would be coming back from that other property could help mm -hmm. you know bring the balance back to zero and then you know you would do it again so okay. like on a on a on a super super conservative like scale here in about a 6 year time frame acquiring two to three properties with the right information and the right education to acquire maybe two to three properties that will cash flow what we're cash flowing right now to at least double our cash flow position and then that cash flow can continue to obviously fund the policy, whatever we can max fund it as, right? So we've got that asset growing for us. We've got that death benefit that's going to, you know, grow for the rest of our lives. It's not going to stay there forever, right? That's the other cool thing. It's not going to stay there. It'll, it'll gradually go up as you reach your 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. That might end up over a half a million, 700,000. We don't know. <clears throat> But um, that could be a huge um, protection for us that satisfies that side of the money. But also having some sort of consistent cash flow on top of this um, monthly paycheck per month. And let me ask you, this, this income, is, is it coming from the, is a portion of it coming from the TSP? Or this is coming from like, you have a pension fund or like a, like a social security? Just a pension, just a pension fund. That's it. I so, didn't take a draw from the TSP. Okay. So you have, so in, so in addition to the TSP, we have a pension fund. That's correct. Gotcha. And, and that's never going to run out or will that run out? Until I expire. <laughs> It will be in force until I expire. Gotcha, got gotcha. so it's for your whole life. Yes. Perfect. And 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 it's gonna be that same number forever. Yes. Okay. Well that's great. Not too many people have these nowadays. They only got the TSPs and the four oh one Ks and, and what happens is those actually run out. Whereas pension Thank funds you. pension funds they don't mm -hmm. run out. So that's great. So I think in about a wow. six year time frame or less. Um, being able to double our cash flow position, fund an IBC policy. We were able to get some numbers here. I'm going to play around with this. I have your age already, so I'm going to take that into account and uh, create an illustration based on a on a 64 year old. And so the other benefit here is um, we want to retain our age of 64. What the insurance companies do is they base off your uh, they base your policy off your attained age of 65. So as long as we do our blood work and medical before you turn 64 and a half, right? As long as we submit the blood work and medical before 64 and a half, we can save age, right? We can retain our age and then um, fund the policy based on a 64 year old you know, because you technically are still 64, but you know, with insurance, they'll, they like to up you a year. It's like one of their little schemes that they have. Um, but okay. it's not, it's not a huge difference in terms of what you pay. Like if you were 65 when you started a policy or if you were 64, it's not a huge difference, but there is a difference, right? There's a small little difference and that's little, little dollars that I, I always nitpick and pay attention to. Um, so we want to at least create the goals like, okay, I want to have this set up by, you know, the beginning of 2020 and the way I'm going to fund it 
is going to be leveraging the the line of credit. So I know a good a good number to start with obviously would be 66% of the line of credit, right? So mm -hmm. 20,000 times 66%, that's 13,200. Let's say I went with option 2, which was left the cash alone, did velocity banking for about three to four months. So that's December, January, February, and by March, fund a policy, right? Okay, okay. So I have the 13,200 chunk capability right there. And then I have the 5,000 plus the 1822.70 plus the 1794.13. That's 8,616.83 plus 13,200. That puts me at 21,816.83. This is only if the insurance company allows us to put that amount of money in. Right, just like I said, it's gonna be based on these three factors right here in terms of what they give us in death benefit. But if that's true, then by March 2020, this is what we would have the ability to, to pretty much work with here. And then doing velocity banking on this 13.2, we'll have this zeroed out in like six months, right? Six to seven months. So before the year is even over, that'll be at zero again. And so we'll, we'll be prepared for March 2021 because between that six month period, let's, you know, we got April, May, June, July, August, September, right? Let's say it's at, let's say the line of credit's at zero by September. So you still have October, November, December, January, February, and March, another six months of this cash flow to work with, which would bring us close to that number again, which would get us right back to this number, right? To be able to okay. dump another, you know, 20K if that was the possibility based on our mech, right? So if our mech was like 22,000, that would mean our premium would be, you know, 2200, which is cool. That's a small premium. That's nice. You know, and I have the ability to dump this amount in. And then I'm going to borrow against this money to make a move somewhere in some type of investment or something that I can produce more income. And and okay. and you know, real estate is a great way to go. It does take like I said, it's like the right information, the right mm -hmm. sort of group to talk to, the right mentors to have, people to connect with to, you know, do a deal, make a move. And that could be something very interesting. Or if you have something that you personally, this goes back to the whole kingdom mindset now, is if you have something that you know is your purpose that you can be focusing on, then we don't necessarily have to focus too much on how to how do I make more money more so how do I make an impact in someone's life because if I can figure that out right so I know what my kingdom authority is and if I can figure out a way to make impact in someone's life with my kingdom authority then when it comes to this money right here our creator is going to provide us with more than we could ever dream of, hope of, even think of. Because we would be, okay. we would be aligning with his will. So we're surrendering our whole entire will here for his will. And then through that, he takes care of all this, right? He takes care of all of it. Yeah. Um, and then all we have to do is do smart things. Like don't spend more than what you make, which you already do cash flow money save the money properly right save i mean just by moving this cash from from less than one percent earnings 
to four to six tax free is a smart move. Plus I get I get a death benefit, right? That will be with me forever. And it's something that I don't have to pay forever either. We would structure this for about maybe a seven to 10 year funding period at max. I don't wanna fund it from age 64 to 84, no way. I don't wanna be paying premiums that whole entire time. I just wanna fund it for about a good 10 solid years maybe, or even less than that. Close it up, do a reduced paid up, and now that's a permanent line of credit for maybe 150K or more. And guess what? That becomes my HELOC that I can use to maybe acquire another property uh, valued at 80K or 90K or just under 100,000, right? right? And then all through my 70s and 80s, that's literally all I would do is acquire a piece of land, have it cash flow, right? And just start paying my mm -hmm. policy back and then, and then look at another property and see, okay, let me acquire this next property here, leveraging debt, whether it be lines of credit, credit cards, right? Or HELOCs, mm -hmm. cash flow, right? And then if I'm focusing on this thing right here, this is big right here. I mean, this, you're, you know this, this is, this is big. It doesn't matter how old I am. If I continue to make an impact in someone's life, the returns on that, not only financially, but sort of like fulfilling wise, man, when, when you meet the Lord, he'll be very, very pleased with your work, you know? Uh, so I think that is huge to keep in mind is thinking about that. If you have ideas, you know, feel free to say it now because when you start putting it out there, you know, into existence and you look back, you're going you're gonna to be able to kind of match things up. So any ideas on that? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Um, mainly um, my ministry, I was thinking I could direct funds there. That was my um, thought before uh, when I called and talked with you. That's always been on my heart, but didn't have the avenue or the structure um in mind how to do how to do it but that is where my heart is to help fund the ministry to help fund the ministry not not create one like you're talking about something that's already in existence exactly okay what is i'm already there and i've done it in, in small ways right um uh, from personal income over and above uh, the tithe and offering, but I want to do it, you know, where there will be a greater impact. That was my focus. Gotcha. So could you mean something along the lines of not only you putting your money in, but you figuring out a way to get other people to put money in? Well, um, I, I haven't talked to my pastor about it or anything. Okay. But, um, I just wanted to create something and for me this is ideal because you need to put the asset somewhere correct um, that are created and that that was my mindset and maybe then the ministry can come up with something um, a way of either distributing funds doing another outreach okay on that I like it here's another idea well, Right now, I'm taking care of my mom. Right. Uh, she's 90 years old. And so that's why I didn't look at other uh, areas right now. Okay. But, um, you know, it's 24-7. Mm -hmm. And she lives with me. So I wanted to do something to be effective and not have me there constantly. Right. If you understand that. Yeah. You need, you need to be mobile, too and not like bound. I have another lady like that where she's taking care of her mom and she can't really work because she's 24 seven taking care of mom. Right. So it's kind of like right. tough, but she's creating a strategy where, well, she actually taking care of her mom and dad, I believe. 
and she's developing a wow. strategy together when I was working with her where it's like she's going to have the ability to kind of have someone else take over that so that she can go out into the marketplace uh -huh. and, you know, provide value, make an impact and do what we want to there. Uh, just another like sort of like a final move in your life is you can position your assets, right, um, where you can give a portion of your either death benefit, a portion of whatever assets you accumulate, like let's say you accumulate five to 10 properties over the next 15 years, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a third of the properties, you can have it set up where when, when I go, when I'm, when I'm gone, a, a third, 30% of assets go to the church, which and, and you got to be real careful with this now because we have to make sure that we know someone in the church that understands what we're doing here so that they can continue to steward that properly, manage that properly. Because we don't want to just give without thought, right? We want to make sure we're, we're, we're I want to give to the church, I want to give to this ministry, but I also want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm uh, finding someone that has my same set of thinking here and I can trust them and say, hey, you know, not only are we aligned in terms of our beliefs and our faith, but also education wise, you're going to know how to manage this right. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a final move is you can set up your will and your trust. If you don't have these okay. two, if you don't have these two things, We'll definitely put those two things in place um, right around the same time of getting a policy put in place. Um, but we can have it set up where it's like, hey, a third of my death benefit or 20% or 10% of my death benefit goes to the ministry as a, as a one lump tax-free distribution right to the church. And then a portion of my assets will now be in the hands of X, Y, and Z LLC of the ministry, whom David and John and, you know, Christina, like those three people, because they know what I was doing and because they've been involved, mm -hmm. those are the people that are going to handle, manage, and keep multiplying the assets, right? We don't want them to just manage it. We want to make sure that they actually grow it. You know, we don't want to be that story in the Bible of that one dude that got one talent and buried it in the dirt where the other two guys took their talents that God gave them and they multiplied it, right? So we want to make sure that we kind of uh, instill that mindset in, who, in whoever you talk to in the church, whether it's the pastor or the people that he works with, um, the partners that he has. We want to make sure we're on the same page so that we're not just... Because I heard what you were saying, you want to just give money to the church, and everybody wants to do that. But if there's no strategy behind it, it it's kind of like blind giving. And I, and I know there's some scripture to back me up on this, where it's like, you know, where, where God tells us, or Jesus says to like, give thoughtfully or give from the heart. So that means it has meaning behind it if I give from the heart. I'm not just giving because it's a law, right? I'm not just giving because that's what the Bible says, like... You know, Jesus kind of raised that even further to say, hey, and, and instead of just following my law, I want you to actually do it from the heart. And if you don't feel it from the heart, he even says, don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got a problem with someone, he says, go solve that problem first with your brother, with your sister before you give, you know, especially if there's, you know, other things that need to get settled. So just some thoughts there. Um, any, okay. any, anything else that comes that just pops up as we're talking this through? Anything else that pops up? Anything? Um, I was just thinking, um, um, when I first talked to you earlier this year, um, as far as teaching the same information that you're giving us, um, uh, I thought about my ministry also, um, just you know, setting up something structured to help those in need who may need this information. 
Oh, yeah. And uh, that was my initial thought. But after, you know, some a few things happened with my mom, and I kind of pulled back from it because I wanted to get her back on feed and, you know, making sure things are well with her. But that was my original thought as far as uh, the money going into the ministry. Okay. Those women. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to keep discussing this, and obviously we're going to work a little bit further because now we have a new plan here. We know that. So just to wrap up, uh, Velocity Banking Option 1, just take your cash flow per month. After making that chunk today with the line of credit, dump all income in, take expenses out, cash flow stays in, do Velocity Bank for three to four months, that'll be at zero. Option 2 was okay. taking all the cash, throw it into the line of credit, be at zero. And then immediately we're, we're working on the IBC to hopefully have it in place by January the latest. Um, okay. Or if we went with option one, it would be maybe February or March the latest. Um, okay. e e either way we look at it, um, we're, we're, we're thinking of a number of anywhere from 13200 to as high as maybe 20000 or 21000 in terms of putting money into an IBC on a yearly basis, and maybe our death benefit will be somewhere around here, as high as 350 to start with, or 175, depending on our age, health, and income that the insurance company will, you know, look at, and um, mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. It awesome. Like a great post. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's been great talking with you. I'm glad we can catch up. And I know you've been with me since before, like 2018, I think, is when we first communicated, if I'm not mistaken. That, that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, <laughs> wow. Making a lot of progress. Love it. Love it, love yes, it, love indeed. it. All right. Well, God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we will talk uh, additional time together one-on-one -on -one to go over that you know, policy design. Okay. All right. All right. I'm making an appointment with you. Okay. Awesome. Have a great day, all right? Talk soon. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.